Hi, everybody. Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Great. All right, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. A uh, quick announcement, if you are not on mute, if you could mute your mic, that would be great. That makes it so we can all hear. Um, we've got about 100 people on the call right now, so we wanna try to keep that tight. Um, so welcome. Thank you so much for coming this weekend to the People's Movement Assembly towards a People's Constitution. I'm really honored that you're investing your weekend here. Uh, it's, a, it's a big commitment and I so appreciate you being part of this. My name is Jessica Munger. I am Move to Amends Program Director. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I am from Northern California, Maidu land, but I currently live um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Mojave. I see a lot of familiar faces here, hi, and a lot of new faces. Uh, so I'll start by reminding you that Move to Amend is a national grassroots organization working to abolish corporate constitutional rights and money as free speech through the 28th Amendment to the US Constitution. But for Move to Amend and our friends, we see the 28th Amendment as one strategy for dismantling the structures um, and uh, institutions that uphold corporate power and patriarchy and white supremacy and other forms of violence and oppression. We see that as being all related. Um, so I've been working with Move to Amend for over six years and I've talked to a lot of people all over the country about the constitution. I've asked a lot of people if they think we should reimagine the US constitution. And what I hear ranges from how dare you to uh, hell yeah, torch the whole thing. Right? But what's most common to emerge from this conversation is that people know we have a major problem and that those problems are at a systemic level, that they're deeply rooted. Uh, they don't feel like they're being represented. Most of them don't feel protected. And most of them share the sentiment that we need deep change. But also most of them are very overwhelmed by the idea of that level of change. And that's very reasonable, right? Um, it's a huge lift. So I wanna give you two reminders as we open today. If you're feeling some apprehension about the topic of reimagining the US Constitution. One is that there are people who are not on our side, the ruling class, fascists, anti-choice crusaders, white supremacists, and they have this conversation. They plan for a constitutional convention. And for me, what's scarier than the thought of those people having a plan is the idea of us not having a plan. We can't be fearful and meek in our demands and our thinking, or we will be trampled. My second reminder is that we're not rewriting the constitution today. There are very bad people in power and we have a lot of political muscle to build, but all big changes start with big conversations. And that's why we're here today and tomorrow to have a big conversation. 
Uh, we know that it can be overwhelming to, you know, take on the idea of, say, changing the fundamental structure and compass of one of the most powerful and destructive empires in the history of the world. Uh, we're talking about revolutionary change um, because we are in revolutionary times and a time absolutely ripe for change. I feel that strongly and I think you feel it too. So I wanna talk about change for a second. Um, change is inevitable, change is constant. Um, I wanna quote one of my favorite thinkers and authors, Octavia Butler, who many of us have turned to in this time. She says, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. Butler also reminds us that we have the power to shape change and thus in her philosophy to shape God. No matter if these specific words resonate with you or not, the idea is that we're shaping the future. No matter what we do, we shape the future. So let's be agents for change for a radically better world and let's shape change towards the world that we want and deserve because a better world actually is possible. I want you to come into this weekend and I invite you to check your fears at the door right now. I invite you to embrace the process that we're gonna go through this weekend and try to be present. I encourage you to give yourself permission to be wild and bold and visionary and think about things outside of what you've been taught is possible or likely. The People's Movement Assembly is a process that requires us to stick with it and be courageous and patient and visionary. Usually we do this in person where we can generate that energy and share space with each other and eat together and create a feeling that I'm not sure can totally be replicated over a computer screen. Um, so please bear with us. We've never done a virtual PMA before. We will likely learn some lessons. Uh, the technology requires some adjustments and some awkwardness. So please go with the flow, please be kind. And keep in mind that this event isn't something we're putting on for you. It's something that we've created space for and that we all contribute to together. So your perspective, energy and investment is part of what will make this weekend whatever it's going to be. So I wanna thank everyone so much for being here and a major thanks to the organizations who came together with us at Move to Amend to craft this event. The Community Environmental Legal Defense Fund, A Radical Guide, the Pachamama Alliance, Liberty Tree Foundation for the Democratic Revolution. Thank you to all of our speakers and presenters and artists and small group anchors and organizers, mentors, and to Jason and Alfonso who are running the tech for this call today. Thank you so much. Um, you know what you're doing and I really appreciate that. Um, so thank you all so much for being here. We're gonna go now into an overview of the PMA process so you can figure out what to expect for this weekend. All right, thanks Jason. So the People's Movement Assembly is a process uh, based on a facilitation method, uh, methodology for collective thinking visioning, alliance building, decision-making and action planning. The social, movement, the social movement assembly results in actions based on the vision and ideas that come out of this process. It's a strategy for getting folks together to talk about a particular thing and collect a bunch of people's experiences and perspectives and set something in motion. It's a participatory process where we all lend our unique and whole selves uh, to go through a series of questions to bring together and better define our vision and path forward. People's Movement Assembly is not just something that happens once and gets wrapped up in a neat package. Um, it's a practice. So it's something that we'll do again and again. It'll feel messy and imperfect and you might feel frustration and impatience sometimes. Um, and as we'll learn about more this weekend, when people work towards constitutional renewal or reform, it's not quick and clean, um, at least not if it's democratic, right? Because democracy itself is a practice and the People's Movement Assembly is a democratic practice in itself. The three questions um, that make up the, the structure of the PMA in this context are, what is the current moment? what's happening and why, uh, how did we get here, right? The second question is, what is our vision? And what is the best thing we can imagine? What's the world that we want and deserve? And for the sake of this PMA, 
what's our vision for a people's constitution? Um, the third question is, how do we move towards that vision? What's already happening and what can we set in motion? So that's the general framework uh, that we're gonna use to navigate through this conversation. So let me tell you about today's agenda specifically. Here we are opening comments, reminders, assumptions, um, give you a, a feel for what we're doing. Then we're gonna set the context. We're gonna have a grounding exercise. Uh, we're gonna have a poetic moment. Uh, an artist share some words with us, Eleanor Goldfield. And then we're gonna have a panel um, with some speakers who have been thinking about this a long time and will give us context for the conversations that we have. Um, then we'll move into our first breakout group. So that's the first question that I showed you before. That's defining the current moment, the context, challenges, and opportunities that are in front of us right now. And then uh, we'll take a break and we'll come back and do breakout session number two with a new group of folks, which is the time for us to envision a people's constitution. That's the really fun, big thinking, visionary part. If we could have anything, what would we want? So that's Saturday. Um, and then tomorrow we'll come back here, same link, uh, same time and place, a little shorter day tomorrow. So we'll open again with a grounding exercise and another poetry share by Patriot X. Uh, we'll have a presentation by Ben Mansky, who is an expert in such things. Um, and then we'll have our third breakout group, which is when we take the vision that we craft today and we start thinking, okay, what can we do to get to that vision to realize that plan? Um, and then we'll close. And uh, that's, that's what we have for this weekend. But we have to understand that the PMA is a much longer uh, process. And again, it's setting something in motion. So there'll be a lot that will come out of this weekend that we don't know yet, because we don't have that, um, that vision crafted yet. So that's the, that's the plan. Um, please go with the flow. I know it's a lot. I want to give you some uh, tips and some expectations that we have for how to maximize this weekend. Um, the standards that we expect coming into this group are what we, uh, what we always expect, which is uh, mutual respect for each other, right? We're all here because we want to do something good. So if you're here, um, we respect you and we hope that you share that with your other group mates too. Courage, um, because this is a bold conversation and a conversation that a lot of people are very scared of. And I think it takes courage to have conversations about things that you might not know that much about or have conversations that feel like you are asking for more than what people think you should be allowed to ask for. So have courage and open-mindedness always helps. Um, and then I ask that you have an attention to power dynamics and uh, microaggressions. Um, like I said, uh, you're gonna be uh, in spaces where there's lots of people that you're talking with. Be aware of how much space you're taking up and the dynamics that exist in cross-class, cross-race, cross multi-gender, multi-generational groups. Um, and then some tips for maximizing. Like I said before, uh, trust the process. Uh, settle in, help us to create a feeling of togetherness that really is gonna take all of us to do if we're on camera. Uh, keep your camera on when you can. It really helps to make it feel like we're together. Um, I know you sometimes have to turn it off, but when you can, that would be great. You're going to feel some impatience during this process. I'm warning you now. You're going to feel some lack of resolution. That's normal, and you should work through it. This is a marathon, and a weekend isn't a very long time. Um, so let that happen. That's okay. Uh, I encourage you to take care of yourself. Drink water, go to the bathroom when you need to, eat with your microphone off, please. Um, do what you need to do to be here. Um, we have a built-in uh, built break today, but you might need more time. That's fine. Um, do what you gotta do. And then uh, keep some notes. It'll help you to collect your thoughts between your turns speaking and help you keep track of some of the interesting stuff you learn. Um, and then unless you're speaking in your discussion groups, please keep your mic muted just so we can uh, keep the audio clean and hear everyone who's speaking. So thank you so much. I'm gonna hand it over now to Greg, who is gonna go over some of the assumptions that we're starting out with today. So you know where we're coming from. Thank you again. Well, thank you, Jessica. Um, just before we start, just wanted to acknowledge uh, the role Jessica has played in being the main sort of facilitator, enabler, and keeping us all together. Done a terrific job. So well done, Jessica. 
Uh, greetings, everyone. Thank you all for being here today. If you recall, you agreed when registering to be at least mostly in agreement with the following assumptions that are the basis for our time together both today and tomorrow. Uh, as mentioned, this is not a space to debate if we should renew the Constitution, um, but rather what is our vision for a people's constitution. So here are the 11 assumptions that are the starting point for this gathering. Number one, the USA is not now, nor has it ever been democratic. Two, the United States was founded on stolen land and built using stolen labor from enslaved people. Three, the US constitution was created by and for the wealthy elite of the era, excluding most people living on the land at the time of its crafting. Specifically, the Constitution was written to protect and represent white men with money and or land. Four, the US Constitution is a property rights document, not a human rights document. Five, the US Constitution was used to perpetuate and to legalize attempt to genocide, white supremacy and racism, male domination over women and class oppression. It took mass movements, broad, deep, conscious, organized and educated to make marginal improvements in this country. With each hard won expansion of suffrage, the governing elite devised mechanisms to shrink what effect the vote would have and still are doing it. Six, any movement that wants to create to want to actually create a new world must create new institutions, including new legal institutions that meet people's needs without destroying the planet that we depend upon for life itself. Seven, all laws should be contingent on and subordinate to the highest laws, unalienable rights shared equally by all. Because unalienable rights are, should be the things most highly valued by society and immune from regulation limitation. The establishment, protection, and enforcement of unalienable rights must be the Constitution's reason for being and should direct freedom to govern in all things in the hands of each community, except wherein a law would limit or violate anyone's unalienable rights. Eight, the Constitution of any country at its best reflects its collective inspirations and aspirations. It defines the legal framework of how people structure their society, politically, economically, and socially. Moreover, constitutions are moral or ethical documents designating what is right and wrong with profound implications on literally every aspect of our lives, of the lives of people, their communities, country, and the natural world. Nine. The US Constitution should be renewed or rewritten to account for new generations and circumstances and should exist as a living document which reflects the challenges and opportunities of the times. 10, in order to move toward new systems and a new foundational document, we must be bold and visionary in imagining a better world. And lastly, 11, the ultimate goal of mass movements is not only to change the culture, but to codify movement demands into laws and most importantly, rights. Well, hopefully everyone uh, is uh, comfortable with that. Uh, that is what uh, you basically signed up for. Um, well, at this point, I wanna turn it over to George Friday, who is um, on the national board of Move to Amend as well as for many years and dare I say decades, uh, a national leader uh, in peace, uh, social and racial justice, economic justice and all things justice. George. Thanks, Greg. All right then, morning y'all. It's good to be able to see you. I'm glad we're here together, but let's make sure we're here together, all right? So, I know I have five minutes. I'll try not to use all of it, but I'm not gonna be shy about using all of it either. We're gonna start off by breathing together, something called square breathing, because we're gonna draw a square. And when we go from left to right or right or left, we're gonna inhale. And when we go down or up, we're gonna exhale. 
Okay, so fingers up. This is exercise in the pandemic age. This is exercise. All right. So we're going to go inhale, down, exhale. Cross inhale, up, exhale. Again, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Continue that. You don't have to draw. I don't have to watch you draw. I trust you are. Across is inhale, down or up is exhale. You're continuing that. I can see some of you aren't. So please breathe properly. Continue doing that. And now we're going to do a little bit more because I know I've got more time. Let me do my breathing. Okay. You don't have to close your eyes, but I like it. So now as you continue square breathing, I'm kind of drawing a square in my head. My head kind of moves. Please pay attention to the top of your head. Can you feel your hair? If you have hair. Can you feel the tiny bits of hair if you don't have hair? Maybe the breeze on the top of your head if their wind is open. And now pay attention to your face, ears, eyelids, eyebrows. Still doing square breathing. It's a lot of multitasking, but we're gonna be doing a lot today. Continue square breathing, paying attention to your face. And now your neck. If your hair is long enough, you may feel it on the back of your neck. Otherwise, your neck is holding your head up. I put on a scarf just for this part of the exercise. Oh, uh, now your shoulders down to your arms. Are your arms resting on your lap, hanging by your sides, wiggling your fingers? And now put your hands on your knees if you can. I'm sitting at my desk, so my feet are flat on the floor. If you're in a position where your feet are flat on the floor, your hands are on your knees, that's the position I hope that you're in, continuing your square breathing. And yes, I'm doing my square breathing and speaking. Thank you very much. So now we're going to do a little bit of magic. A couple more before we're done. Got about two more minutes. All right, then. So get your hands on your knees. You can still aware of the top of your head and your face, your shoulders, your arms. From the palm of your hand to the top of your knee, to the arch of your feet, I want you to send energy down from the palm of your hand through to the arch of your feet. That could be a spiral of light, a jolt of lightning, a flow of beautiful love through your knee, down your leg, exiting through arch of your feet. And now, continuing your square breathing, I trust that. In your next inhale, inhale energy back up from the arch of your feet, essentially from earth, up through the palm of your hand and send it back to your elbows. For me, my elbows rest at my hips. Wherever your elbows rest on your legs or your body, you're sending that energy back up through your elbows, all the way into the base of your spine. So now we've got energy coming up from earth to the base of our spine. For me, that spirals of light. For you, it could be some other symbol of the energy moving up, up to your spine. And now you can feel that energy as it hits your spine because there's some warmth now just below your belly button. You got that? Yeah, that's right. And when you inhale, you feel that energy. You exhale, it expands. When you're inhaling, you're taking that energy in. You exhale, you send the energy through your body. The next time you inhale, take that energy in and exhale it 
through your spine all the way up to the top of your head. And now you're connected from earth to sky. And you're here. Woohoo! Sorry to be so loud. I'm just glad that we're here. I get excited. We're going to have a great day. So awesome that you're here, that you're putting your time, your energy into this. Oh, one last thing I didn't mention. Someone did remind me. So through the, today's process, and maybe we get a chance to remind this maybe in breakout groups, remember that in this process, especially for the creative part, you don't have to use your intellect. We know that you're brilliant. Remember that you've got some other people helping you, ancestors, mentors, those folks who's passed on, who really love you and know we got to get it right. They're here. So you can call on when you need them. Do not hesitate as it's happening. So Eleanor, Eleanor is going to give us something beautiful now. Thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, George. I don't like to follow that act though. That was, <laughs> that was really wonderful. I feel so much better uh, in these stressful times. Uh, that was a wonderful grounding exercise. Thank you. Uh, and hello, everyone. It's awesome to see some of you that, um, that I've, I've seen before, though it's been a hot minute. Uh, and it's great to be here in general. Uh, so yeah, I, I wanted to just share a spoken word piece. But before I do that, kind of explain like what it is that uh, what it is that I do and why it's important, not personally what I do, but in general. Uh, and I'll start with a, a quote, um, both from Bertolt Brecht and uh, James Baldwin. So the Bertolt Brecht quote goes, art is not a mirror held up to reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. Um, and the, the James Baldwin quote is only poets, and by that I mean all artists, know what it is to be alive on this planet and survive it. Uh, and so it's kind of like that, mentality that that uh, amplifies the importance of art and by art I don't just mean like uh, artistic mediums like music and visual art but actually creative thinking and George uh, mentioned that too um, you know the sort of programmed thinking that we uh, are <laughs> are bombarded with and propagandized with in this country will have us rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic but creative thinking will have you making rafts out of deck chairs um, and that's the importance of art and that's the importance of creative thinking. Um, and sure, like ultimately like art won't topple empires, but it'll inspire the people who do. Um, and, you know, creative thinking is radical thinking and it is anti-capitalist thinking and it is thinking that pushes us outside the confines again, uh, that they want us to stay in. And particularly right now in the time of COVID, uh, when we feel especially raw from all of the designed failings that most of us knew were there, but are even more stark in this time. Uh, art's a cornerstone of how we build community, uh, you know, and in mutual aid spaces, it's how we share our stories, how we keep stories alive uh, that have been buried uh, by, by the system on purpose. Uh, it's how we build new ones, how we build new worlds. Like the Zapatistas said, uh, we want a world where many worlds are possible. Uh, that sort of creative thinking is how we build those worlds. Um, it's an invitation to think and act radically and act uh, and think outside the box. So with that, I just wanted to share a little, uh, a little spoken word piece that I wrote um, specifically for this, this time and place. It's called Play. What a strange time to write poetry. What a strange time to play music. What a strange time to build barricades and light Molotov dreams. What a strange time to rattle thrones. To breathe tear gas and sage, to smell change, to pray with raised fists, to meditate in bellowed screams. What a strange time to smile, to laugh, to wear masks that reveal who we are, to dance when we know the world is watching to forge silver linings in hurricanes, to write our stories in graffiti on monuments to a whitewashed history, 